So I got a call from Johnny at Ducati South Africa based in Randburg and he asked me if I wanted to come and test their new model on the floor and I said well what is it? He says it's a cruiser bike. Well I'm not really into the cruiser bike market but I thought what the hell let's go out and test this bike. It's the X Devil. Now the Devil has been out for some time in South Africa but that's more of a road bike, that's more of like a naked bike. This is the X model which is a cruiser bike. What do we mean by cruiser? Well, feet forward, higher bars, sort of that choppers look and that sort of riding style. So you sit really upright and you cruise along. But don't be fooled by the cruiser label on this motorcycle because it shares the motor with the Panigale Superbike. So that means it's got horsepower and plenty of it. The original Panigale motor was the 1198 Tesla Stretto motor, an L-twin. Well, they've made this engine with a longer stroke, so it's 1262 cc's compared to the original 1198. And that's for more torque. In fact, it makes 128 Newton meters at 5,000 RPM. Riding this motorcycle for the first time is a bit like opening an assorted box of chocolates. You take the creamy chocolate and that's really kind of smooth. Well, that's not the deer of all. Actually, this is the one that you take out of the packet and it's that ginger taste. And you think, oh my goodness, who's put ginger in the chocolates? It tastes really awful. Until you start chewing on it and you get used to that bite and that tang. After a while, you quite like the ginger chocolate. The deer of all is very similar to that. When you climb on it, you think, eh, who put the ginger in the chocolate? After a few bites, this motorcycle is highly addictive to ride. This is the ginger in the box of chocolates. Typically Italian in styling, unusual should we say. It's got the latest Brembo M50 calipers, which give you more feel when you jam on those brakes. That monstrous L-twin motor, 90 degree V-twin, single sided swing arm, and the nitrided front forks for less stiction. In fact, these are the 50 millimeter Marzocchis that have just hit the market. Upright handlebars and the rear shock absorber adjustable for compression and rebound. Rear suspension on a cruiser bike is really critical because your riding position, the way you sit on the bike, means that the bumps go right through your spine. As per normal cruiser bike fashion, it's got a belt drive, which is just about a first for Ducati as far as I can remember. This is the XDFL S model, so it's got some additional extras like that rear wheel, Termione exhaust, different padding on the seat. You can also get a sissy bar and extended seat for pillion riders, daytime running lights, a steel trellis frame combined with alloy castings at the back of the engine holding it all together. Apparently there's 60 combinations of footrest, seat and handlebar positions on this XDFL. I've never ridden a cruiser bike in the past that can actually loft the front wheel at will with just the power from the throttle. Never seen that before. But don't forget these bikes are about 10 meters long. So to lift that front wheel takes immense power. Now let's not forget the source of the motor is from the Panigale Superbike. And that's why this motorcycle is so powerful. But also they've tuned it so it's got even more torque than the Panigale. So as you crack that throttle on, it just lifts the front wheel from about 6,000 RPM. It's quite mind blowing and as I said a bit earlier, it really is addictive when you ride this motorcycle. At low revs, the engine's quite clanky in fact. So what you want to do is keep the revs up slightly at around about 5,000 RPM. That really is the sweet spot on this motorcycle. This bike actually has got six ECUs built in. The things that control things like engine management, inertia, sensor for speed, pitch and roll, acceleration, deceleration. Three levels of launch control. Do we need launch control on a cruiser bike? A little while back we said the computer on a motorcycle was more powerful than the computer that originally landed men on the moon. Well, the computer on this Ducati could probably land 10 men on the moon because it is immensely powerful. In fact, this is one of the most super intelligent onboard computers that we've come across. Electronically, everything is taken care of 
on this motorcycle. From your traction controls, your rider modes, the wheelie control, quite important on this bike. Lean angle control, can't go more than 40 degrees and it tells you, hang on, this bike's leaning over too far. So it's got all the ultra modern aids that you'd expect out of an ultra modern motorcycle. Another feature is the keyless entry. As long as you're within two meters of the motorcycle with that key, press the button and it all comes to life. Including a Bluetooth connection for hands-free kit on your telephone on the left side of the handlebar on most of the controls on the computer, plus cruise control. And it sounds amazing. The Ducati engineers have also gone out of their way to keep engine noises to a minimum by fitting, for instance, a thicker clutch cover so you don't have that typical clutch noise from the engine. Typically Italian, this bike, in design. They always do things differently. Now, when you're riding along, the clocks are way down low. They're not up in front of you. So you hold the handlebars and there's nothing in front of you except the open road. And that really does invite you to just keep on going. Obviously you're going to take quite a buffeting from the wind because there is no protection whatsoever from the front end of this bike. But what a cool feeling when you've just got the handlebars in front of you, no instruments, nothing, and you're just bombing along the road looking where you're going. It's incredible. It really does bring along the feeling of easy rider. Thanks to the variable valve timing on the desmodromically operated valves, the torque starts really low down. And it's quite amazing that this bike will buzz right through to 10,000 RPM where the maximum horsepower of claimed 156 ponies. And you can just about believe that when you ride this Ducati. Immense power from this engine. I mentioned the long wheelbase. Well, it's not 10 meters. In fact, it's 1,61 meters in length. Dry weight of the bike, 220 kilograms. But because you sit inside the motorcycle, very low to the ground, just over 700 millimeters, in fact, from the ground to the seat, it feels much lighter on the move. And the bulk of the motorcycle, you really don't feel it. What's also impressive, the rear tire, which is a 240 section tire, a massive rear tire, which you would fit onto a supercar. Normally that affects the handling of these sort of motorcycles in a bad way. You don't want too much rubber on the ground on a motorcycle, it's just the way things work out. But somehow Ducati have got this bike to handle almost like a super bike, despite that massive and fashionably looking 240 section tire. And you have to agree, the look of this rear wheel is something to behold. The fuel tank holds 18 litres, so you should get just under 400 k's on a tank. And quite impressive, the service intervals are 15,000 kilometres. At under 40 k's per hour, you can actually change the engine settings and engine management on the move with that left hand handlebar control. The base model, which is not this model, by the way, because this has got all the goodies on it, sells for around about 240,000 Rand. So it's not a cheap motorcycle. For an extra 35 grand, you get this model. It's got all the added extras on it. The different wheels, the different running gear, that type of thing, the daytime lights. So I think, is it worth paying the 35, 40 grand extra? It probably is, because when you're in this area of the marketplace, I don't think money really is an issue. So in summary, what don't I like about the motorcycle? Well, suspension is a bit harsh out of the box, but I think you could tune that up as you're riding along. The riding position, feet forward, you've got to get used to that. Takes a bit of getting used to, but of course, cruiser bike riders will be used to that type of thing. So there's very little else I can complain about on this motorcycle. The only complaint I probably have is having to take it back to Ducati, South Africa, because once again, and I keep saying it about the bikes that we're riding because they just get better and better and better. But in the cruiser bike market, sitting like this, this is the business.